The 90s were an interesting time period for video games. Back then, it was easy to see examples of developers experimenting with new ideas, seeing what worked and what didn't, assuming they weren't porting arcade games, that is. When developers would strike gold with a new idea, it wasn't standard to immediately begin pumping out improved versions of the same thing via sequels. Indeed, sequels back then would continue the experimenting, often leading to innovative ideas that usually don't age as well as you'd expect. Zelda 2 turned an action-adventure game into a platformer with RPG elements, Castlevania 2 gave us one of the earliest true Metroidvanias, and so on. Fire Emblem was also one of the series where the sequel gave us a unique experience from the original, and oh boy, does it not age well. Fire Emblem Gaiden was released in 1991. The plot of this game is set in a different continent from the original, but is set in the same universe, hence the Gaiden in the title. The word means side story, and is most definitely not pronounced Gaiden. Some characters from the original make a return appearance, but the focus of the story is on a newer cast. This game is set on a continent ruled over by a god, Duma, and a goddess, Mila. The two disagree on how to rule the continent, however, and so divide it in two. Mila's country of Sophia is a paradise that never runs low on resources, producing a population of lazy, entitled jerks, and Duma's country of Regal has such a harsh environment that mercy and kindness are lost on its people. Regal eventually gets sick of its harsh lifestyle and decides to invade Sophia and seize its fertile lands, setting up the conflict of the game with a decent amount of nuance and a surprise twist or two along the way. The story still feels very bare bones, and character interaction is about on the level of the original Fire Emblem, but we can at least observe that the writing is taking another step forward. This is also a sharp contrast with the original Fire Emblem's good versus evil war story. There's a lot more going on in the background this time around. And I feel I should also state the positives before I get all ranty, so I would like to point out that the graphics and music definitely improved in Fire Emblem Gaiden. They weren't too bad in Fire Emblem 1, but Gaiden introduces a lot of cool new animations and improves on some old ones. This is especially notable in the Cavalier animation. The legs on that horse actually gallop, it's not like the original's one or two frames. There's even more than one tile set for the maps, whereas the original game used one tile set for the entire game, and the endgame chapters suffer for it big time, they don't look the least bit intimidating. As for music, I do actually enjoy the soundtrack of Gaiden more so than Fire Emblem 1, though only by a little bit. I for one can be very thankful that they actually included more than one map theme, as opposed to the previous game where it was the same music all the way up until the very final chapter, and that's, uh, that gets repetitive, so thank you, Intelligent Systems. Gameplay? Well, that's another story. You begin the game in the small village, where our hero is seen sparring with his gramps. After a brief talk, you can actually walk around the village and chat with people. You find out a soldier is recruiting a team of teenagers with attitude to push back against Regal's invasion. Unfortunately, Gramps isn't too into it, so our hero and the villagers decide to take up arms themselves. You exit town and boom, there's your first battle. So there was a lot to take in just now, but these are the changes apparent in the first few minutes of gameplay. 1. There are now towns you can walk around in with people to talk to and items to find, like in a more usual RPG. 2. Exiting town leads to a world map where you fight enemies in several mini-battles to advance across the world map. 3. There are actually only 5 chapters of story, but they consist of many, many of these mini-battles. These are not terrible ideas, in fact it's a very refreshing take on the formula. Walking around towns and talking to people is good for interacting with the world a little more, which is something you tend to miss out on in strategy games. Unfortunately, a few issues pop up when you step into battle. First, you'll notice your characters have no items in their inventory but can still fight. Every character is given a default weapon. You can equip characters with better weapons you find throughout the game, and they all have infinite uses, meaning the item and money management from the previous game is no longer a mechanic. There are also items with passive effects, which the original game sort of had, but they are more prevalent here. But there are no vulnerabilities here, so you need either clerics or healing tiles to heal. And traversing a world map carries with it a number of benefits. 
First of all, it makes the later chapters feel like an actual war because you're marching across battlefield after battlefield, mowing down enemies in your path. It's a lot more immersive that way, although it's still a little weird for the player's ragtag band to be decimating entire armies while vastly outnumbered by the enemy. Yeah. The world map also enables many alternate paths, choices of paths to take, and dungeons, some of which are optional. This game is actually more lenient with character death because there are many chances to revive a fallen party member. You just have to get to the Holy Springs hidden behind waves of dangerous zombies down in the dungeons. And even the springs are limited in uses, so you should still probably try not to die, especially because the already low number of characters have been split into two parties, one for the hero Alm and one for the heroine Selica. You'll be controlling them as separate parties until they combine forces in the finale, and until that point, death can be pretty punishing. Battles have unfortunately become far less tactical. You'll notice that many maps throughout Fire Emblem Gaiden are wide open plains or thick forests with only a few maps offering something that doesn't look like someone drew a blue line on a green piece of paper. The map design in the original Fire Emblem wasn't perfect, far from it in fact. More than a few of those maps are wide open and boring as well with random clumps of enemies that basically beg you to one round anyone who didn't pose too huge a threat. It's the first Fire Emblem. Rough edges were to be expected. Gaiden is unfortunately far worse in this regard, probably because there are so many more maps in Gaiden that they couldn't give the same care and attention to all of them. It really feels like they went for a low effort map design in many areas. Everyone who plays this remembers the infamous boat battles in Chapter 2, where there's one or two planks separating a pair of boats with a single enemy summoner, a new class that can conjure up a stupidly large number of new monster enemies in massive waves, that take forever to bring down, although in this attempt the summoner bizarrely decided not to do anything until I got in close. It seems that the climactic chapter ending battles are the ones that are designed to be tactical battles with the same care and attention in Fire Emblem 1's best maps. Although I say that even though many of the enemies in chapter 1's ending battle just decided to sit there until I got into range. Yeah. And I wanted to mention that several small-scale battles in a row isn't necessarily a bad thing. Some players like their video game levels short but sweet, episodic as opposed to feature length. Except Gaiden immediately starts with some arbitrarily lengthened fights. In the first chapter, both sides have lots of HP and they essentially chip away at it a little bit each turn, making for slow battles. Units were more fragile at the start of Fire Emblem 1 because strategy was also kind of important, but here I get to deal with damage sponges sitting on healing tiles, strong units that I have to take extra time waiting for them to get to me, and why in the world can't my units hit anything? Seriously, I missed so many shots in this battle, it's not even funny! This is only the first chapter, so if you're sick of it already, then it doesn't get all that much better, sadly. And I can keep going, actually, because the second chapter has one battle in particular, where we encounter three allied, AI-controlled units that will join Selica's party if they survive this fight, though you could wait until later in the game and have Alm pick them up instead, but I digress. The archer in this chapter died like four or five times for me, I simply could not figure out how to save him because the enemies instinctively attack the weakest enemy they can see. You know, the original game had several situations like this, but you could at least move the new units yourself. Anyways, it was pointed out to me that you could retreat from the battle and return, and the AI-controlled units won't be there, which means they can't die by virtue of not being in the battle. That was the first I had ever heard of actually being able to retreat from fights, actually, and the reason for that is, apparently the option to retreat is only there at random. Or it depends on the map. I don't know. I don't even know where to begin trying to talk about that. And honestly, I can keep going about the map design in this game because Chapter 3 introduces the desert chapters, which really, really slow down the player's movement if you're not a flyer. 
I mean, there were maybe one or two desert maps in Fire Emblem 1, but Gaiden has like a ton of them and they're just so slow. One of the maps is a fortress full of archers in the middle of a desert, so you're slowly inching towards the fortress while the archers are just taking pot shots at you the entire time. It's so bad. And then in Chapter 4, we have a volcano map where there's like this huge sea of lava that you have to walk across and you're taking damage the entire time and you're slowed down it's ah oh, i don't know what they were thinking here i really don't now it should be noted that gaiden is also unique in that it features replayable battles in cave areas you can run into enemy groups that respawn every time you enter and fight them for more exp and rare item drops this is fine if you want players to have an out in case their units are falling behind in exp Enemies can also spawn on the world map and move towards you if you're too slow to advance in some chapters. If you include replayable battles, however, it can be difficult to judge how strong the player is expected to be in each battle, because they may have decided to do too much grinding. I also happen to think it's rather telling that this is the first Fire Emblem to let you have the AI control all of your units for you. Yeah. Gaiden honestly feels to me like they expect you to grind. RPGs back then required grinding quite a lot. It's unfortunate that Gaiden went in that direction because the fact that you couldn't grind added to what was making Fire Emblem unique to begin with. I should note that Gaiden is the one Fire Emblem game I personally have never finished, not even including the remake on the 3DS. But it feels like they want you to grind quite a lot considering some of the gimmicks in chapters 4 and 5. Characters in Gaiden get boosts to their stats far less frequently than in, in the original Fire Emblem as well. If you look at the numbers, their growth rates are frequently below 50% in many stats, unless they have an overpowered and rare growth booster equipped. This is also actually the first game to include an easy mode, which gives double EXP and more item drops, but it's basically an official cheat code as games sometimes had back then. If it's supposed to be a legitimate difficulty option, it feels like a band-aid, honestly. But you're not exactly invincible if you use it, so it's really up to you. Promotions are worth talking about, too. Like in the previous game, promotions raise the character's stats up to the base of the new class if the stat hasn't reached that far yet. Promotions don't take items in this game, you just need a shrine to do it at, and you should probably do it as soon as possible considering the growth rate problem. There's also a new class, the Villager, which can be promoted into one of four options, letting you customize your party a little. Annoyingly, however, the game picks one of the four options at random, though you can cancel out and try again, but seriously, they couldn't make a GUI for this? Also, for whatever reason, the Mercenary Path in particular allows infinite leveling because you can promote to Demon Fighter and then loop back to the Villager class, so you could max out any Mercenary before promoting them into whatever class you want them to be. I don't know why they did that, it honestly feels like some kind of mistake, but they preserved it in the remake, so I don't really know. Your basic classes like Cavaliers, Mages, Archers, and Mercenaries haven't changed much. Well, archers now have a much wider attack range and can counterattack at one range, so that's something. They'll need it considering the maps are far more wide open. Mages and clerics got the biggest changes because their magic attacks aren't tied to items anymore. In fact, they now learn new spells by leveling up, a novel concept, but they handle it rather poorly. Every character in the game has a different list of spells they can learn and at different levels. You have no way of knowing who gets what spell and when, so in order to know if a villager or mercenary would get an amazing spell as a mage, you need to have played the game already, or looked it up online. Of the three villagers you get at the start of the game, Cliff is the clear winner of the mage path, getting more spells than the other two, including the Excalibur spell, but how in the world would you guess that? There's no clue to that at all. Spells also now cost HP to cast since their use isn't limited otherwise. Yeah, the spells cost HP to cast, but the Thunder Sword and the Archers, they don't have to pay HP to attack, so I don't know what's going on there. The only spell to cost 0 HP is the Cleric's Resire spell, also known as Nosferatu, which absorbs HP and is the only way for a Cleric to heal herself, and the only way to gain EXP, because they don't gain e EXP for tanking hits, now they gain it for 
actually fighting with the Resire spell, which has such a low hit rate that it's going to be very, very difficult for them to level up this way, too. Ugh. Clerics can obtain game-breaking spells as usual, like Warp, Fortify, as well as Deer, a new spell that wipes out Undead in an instant. Take that, you zombie-spamming summoner, and even some summoning magic of their own. Too bad you can't get the enemy-only rewarp spell that the witches love to spam in this game, so they can literally attack any unit they want, no matter how far behind enemy lines they are. Oh yeah, and attacking with a spell equips it, so if an enemy attacks that mage, either they will spend more HP on the counterattack, thus endangering themselves further, or they will be unable to pay the cost to do so and do absolutely nothing. Really, to be perfectly honest, for all of the cool new ideas that are actually pretty interesting, very few of them were implemented in actually good ways. Now, does all of this make Fire Emblem Gaiden a failed experiment of sorts? In my mind, it does. It's way too far off from what Fire Emblem was in the previous game. It's difficult for me to recommend this game in its original form. There does happen to be a much improved remake of this game on the 3DS, which I will talk about in detail further down the road, but the original Famicom game is probably best left alone. That doesn't mean, of course, that there aren't some good ideas here that could be implemented better in a future title. In fact, one of the games high on my list of favorites is a great successor to Gaiden, but that's a ways off. Next time, Fire Emblem gets back on track and delivers one of the most well-known games in the series. Third time's the charm, am I right?